In this online lecture, I want to show you how to evaluate a substituent that may not be on your list here or the list your professor gives you for your orgo exam. Keep in mind that this is possible. Not every list contains every substituent. And not only that, to really test your understanding of this material, a smart professor would put a substituent on your exam that you haven't seen before so that you would be forced to think conceptually on the exam and not just simply memorize something. So we need a way to not only analyze our substituents, but to do it a lot faster than we did when we analyzed these substituents on the list. Remember, typically your orgo test is timed, so you don't have time to write out all of the resonance intermediates and stand back and make your evaluation. So here's what we do instead. Remember, we look at the overall result. And that is, in our previous analysis, we saw, in all cases here, no exceptions, that if you add an electrophile, let's say ortho, to an original substituent here, remember the positive charge will end up on the carbon bearing the original substituent. We also saw in the previous online lectures, always no exception, that if we add an electrophile para to the original substituent, even though the direct result of this move right here is this intermediate, we only have to take these pi electrons right here and move them this way to get this resonance intermediate showing the positive charge again landing on the carbon bearing the original substituent. So again, in summary, we know when an electrophile adds either ortho or para, we end up with this particular resonance intermediate. And that's exactly all we need to remember this key point right here to enable us to quickly evaluate a substituent. Now, just in case, to make sure you understand this point, remember, we also saw that if you add an electrophile meta to an original substituent on a benzene ring, you ended up with this resulting intermediate. If you drew one of the resonance structures, for instance, moving these pi electrons here, that enabled us to get to this resonance structure. And drawing one more here, moving the pi electrons this way, we got a third resonance structure here. And notice, adding meta, the positive charge here never lands on the carbon bearing the substituent. So again, all we need to know and remember is this fact right here. So let me show you how this works then. Let's say again you're on your orgo test and you're asked to predict the product of this reaction. We're adding an electrophile to this molecule and look at this substituent. It's CBr3. And this substituent happens to not be on your list. So think about it. If we don't know what directing ability he has, we can't make a quick product analysis here. What we should do is quickly evaluate this substituent. And think about this here conceptually. Having those BRs, which are very electronegative, means that the bonds from the carbon to each BR are not only polar, but the electron pull is in this direction, from the less electronegative carbon to the more electronegative BR. Think about what that might do to the partial charge on that carbon. Pulling electrons away from him would give him a partially positive charge. So what this means is that we know, remember, if we add an electrophile ortho to this substituent, one of the resonance structures will have the positive charge land on this carbon right here. And all we have to do is ask ourselves, is this stabilizing or destabilizing? And notice what happens here? We got two positive charges next to each other. And again, since positive charges want to repel each other, this would be unstable. And remember, we also know that we would get this resulting resonance structure if we added para as well. So that tells us the electrophile is not going to want to add ortho or para to this substituent, which means we're done. We get to our answer. We know to add the electrophile meta to him. And notice how quickly we got to the answer here and how most, if not all, of this was done mentally in your head. Which brings me to the big picture here. Remember, if you know this fact, and if you've memorized all your substituents on your list, there is no substituent now that you can't handle. Obviously, if your substituent is on your list, go ahead and just use the list. But if not, do your quick analysis to gain a better understanding of how your substituent affects the benzene ring.